E gridate, 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 sai a me che me ne importa. E parlate, parlate, io fingerò di ascoltarvi per l'ennesima volta. Something very important in capitalist or market economies is the concept of money. You have been researching a lot of the, on the social origins of money. And could you explain us the fundamentals of the okay. social origins? Of I wouldn't money? say that I've been researching a lot mm -hmm. on that. I did some research on that years ago, and out of that came that paper on Egypt and the social origins of money, or whatever the title of that paper was, or that, uh, yeah, that, okay. The standard approach, as you know, is that money comes out of barter. And as we know, barter is clumsy and all that kind of stuff. And people are inventive, so they invent this thing called money that serves as this medium of exchange. Right? So there's no social foundation to money, actually. It just sort of appears as a lubricating mechanism. You reduce transaction costs. Money, like any other category, has to be understood within a social context because we are social animals and we have gone through this long evolutionary process, as some people would term it, and along the way we as a society have, or societies I should say because they obviously differ, we have concocted various arrangements either to benefit all or to benefit a portion of the larger population. So when you look at places like Mesopotamia, Egypt, etc., and I would suggest any early civil society, property society, class society, what you find is that money emerges out of previous egalitarian arrangements which are then modified to basically turn society on its head. And money is one of those institutions, right? And it's a primary institution. So that money comes out of these debt relationships that you find, non-monetary debt relationships that you find in pre-class society that are converted then into monetary relationships. And where you previously had egalitarian relationships, you now have quite unequal relationships. In the Egypt, Egyptian case, the priesthood, which was a new creation, is able to continue to extract economic surplus from a producing portion of the population through imposing obligations. Now we've all had, in all of our social existence, we've always had obligations. But if the obligations are within an egalitarian structure, then they're mutual obligations. If they're in a class structure, then they aren't mutual, right? These are obligations imposed by uh, one section of the population on another section of the population. And these obligations then eventually constitute monetary. So money appears not as a thing, which is the standard argument, you know, you have barter and then you settle on a thing to serve as money. It emerges, in fact, as a social relationship between those who impose the obligations and those who are then obligated to provide some kind of, of economic surplus to satisfy those obligations. So therefore, money has a social origin, and it's a social relationship, and it's an institution that emerges at a particular juncture in human his history with the emergence of class societies. Now, in the modern period, then, you look at the, look at the nature of money and you still see this debt-credit relationship. And notice, if it's a debt-credit relationship, as it must be, the neoclassical economists argue that money is an asset. Well, if it's an asset, there has to be a liability somewhere. This is the nature of balance sheets. If you have a plus, you've got to have a minus, right? Well, those who are in a credit position are in a superior position. Those that are in a debt position are in an inferior position. It's an unequal relationship. So you've lost a long time ago 
the old egalitarian structures, the old egalitarian relations, the old egalitarian ideology, and now we're stuck, for the time being at least, with these unequal relationships where the majority of the population is obligated to a distinct minority of the population. And increasingly that minority controls the financial system, the monetary system. And as we've seen that increasingly over the last 50 years. But it's been, it's been developing for longer than that. Veblen speaks to this in 1904. Marx speaks to this in volume three of Capital. So it's been going on for well over 150 years. As it continues to, let's say, evolve, those who control the financial arrangements, the financial system, basically control everything else. And we know that recent uh, empirical work on this, where the numbers vary from one study to another, but they all show the same thing that the largest financial institutions control most of the production process. And uh, if you go back to, I don't know if you've read Dud Dudley Dillard's 19th, I can't remember the year, but Dillard, he was a very prominent economist, University of Maryland back in the 40s, 50s, into the 60s, well, into the 70s, actually, wrote this very good paper where he says, look, we as people are interested in things we're interested in the what the production process can generate food clothing shelter etc those who control the production process are interested in money so they see things as something of a liability until they can get rid of it and convert those things into money we see money as something that is useful only to acquire things and that juxtaposes these two divisions within larger society quite nicely, actually. So money is the object. Now, unfortunately, increasingly, as the monetary economy uh, unfolds and progresses, if you want to use that word, I might say regresses, more and more of the population becomes interested in money. For example, they see their house, not as a house, but as an asset, as a financial asset, and then they get worried about whether the, high, uh, the, 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 the price of the house will rise or fall. <laughs> you know, a house is a house. And whether it's valued at $100,000 or $300,000, it's still the same old house. So we have this problem, and increasingly a problem. And Veblen speaks to this. It's a form of what he called emulation, where more and more of the population emulates those who are in control of the economy and who exhibit very high incomes, lavish spending, and all that sort of stuff. And their emphasis is on money. So with emulation, increasingly more people emphasize money rather than things, rather than stuff, or rather than a decent society, which is should be the objective, actually, of social organization and of social development, but it's not. Anyway. Sapete ascoltare